Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to balance chemical equations. Lots of students think this topic's tricky, but I'll show you a method that always works. Before I start, I'm going to recap what's meant by a chemical formula, as that will help us later. This shows the formula of the compound sodium carbonate. Remember that capital letters tell us that we have an element, so you can see that we've got three elements in this compound. We've got sodium, carbon, and oxygen. So let's look at the number of atoms of each element. The little two on the right of the sodium tells us that we've got two atoms of sodium. There's no little number on the right of the carbon, so that means we've got one atom of carbon. Finally, the small three on the right of the oxygen tells us that we've got three atoms of oxygen. Now, this brings us to one of the most important rules in chemistry. You are never allowed to change the small numbers in a chemical formula, as this produces a different molecule. I've now put a large three in front of the whole formula. So what does that mean? Well, this means that we now have three molecules of sodium carbonate, and I'm showing you these here. We often use large numbers like this in chemistry, and it's perfectly acceptable. OK, here's a chemical reaction. Calcium plus chlorine makes calcium chloride. This is a balanced chemical equation because the number of atoms of each element is the same on both the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we've got one atom of calcium, and we've got two atoms of chlorine. And on the right-hand side, we've also got one atom of calcium and two atoms of chlorine. So can you see that this equation is balanced? In the exam, you could be asked to balance a chemical equation, so let's see how to do this. Here's another chemical equation, and this one's not balanced. We've got sodium plus iodine making sodium iodide. The first thing we need to do is count the number of atoms of each element on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. On the left-hand side, we've got one atom of sodium, and on the right-hand side, we've also got one atom of sodium, so the sodium atoms are balanced. Let's look at the iodine. On the left-hand side, we've got two atoms of iodine, but on the right-hand side, we've only got one atom of iodine, so the iodine atoms are not balanced. We need to get one more atom of iodine on the right-hand side. Now, remember that we cannot change small numbers, so this is not allowed. However, we are allowed to use large numbers in front of a chemical. So if I place a large 2 in front of the sodium iodide like this, I now have two atoms of iodine, so now the iodine is also balanced. However, we've got a problem because now we've got two atoms of sodium on the right-hand side, but we only have one sodium atom on the left-hand side. We need to get an extra sodium atom on the left-hand side, and we can do that by putting a large 2 in front of the sodium like this. So now you can see that this entire equation is balanced. Now I should point out that in the exam you're not normally asked to balance an entire equation. Usually you're only given one part to balance. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples to try yourself now, and both of these are very typical of the ones that you could get in your exam. Here's the first example. We've got calcium oxide plus hydrochloric acid produces calcium chloride plus water. I'd like you to balance this equation by inserting a large number in the space here. You should pause the video now and try this. OK, as you can see, we've got one calcium atom on both the left and the right-hand sides, so the calcium is balanced. We've also got one oxygen on both the left and the right-hand sides, so the oxygen is balanced as well. However, we've got one hydrogen atom on the left-hand side, and we've got two hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side so the hydrogen is not balanced. We've also got one chlorine atom on the left and two chlorine atoms on the right, so this means that the chlorine is not balanced. If we place a large 2 in the space here, then this means that we now have two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of chlorine on the left-hand side, so now this equation is balanced. Here's a final one for you to try. In this reaction, we've got iron oxide reacting with carbon monoxide, and we're producing iron and carbon dioxide. I'd like you to balance the equation by inserting a large number in this space. You should pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, on the left-hand side, we've got two atoms of iron and three atoms of carbon. We've also got six atoms of oxygen in total on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we've got two atoms of iron, one atom of carbon, 
and two atoms of oxygen. So we need two more atoms of carbon and four more atoms of oxygen on the right hand side. And we can get that by adding a large three in the space like this. Now we have three atoms of carbon on the right and also six atoms of oxygen. So the equation's balanced. You'll find plenty more questions on balancing chemical equations in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to balance chemical equations.